Hi, welcome you all for online spoken faculty development program on Advanced Communication Laboratory. Today's experiment is fiber optic transmission through analog link. This is experiment number 4 and session 1. The aim and objective of the experiment is to set up a fiber optic analog link and to measure the bandwidth of the given optical fiber. First, we will say what is a fiber optic system? It's a communication system that uses light as the carrier of the information from a source to a destination through a guided fiber cable that may be a glass or plastic are called fiber optic system. The information carrying capacity of a communication system is directly proportional to its bandwidth. The wider the bandwidth, the greater is its information carrying capacity. Because of high information carrying capacity and low attenuation, nowadays fiber are finding wide application in telecommunications, local area networks, sensors and computer networks etc. This is a sample fiber optic cable construction and the comparison with metallic cable. So fiber optic cable consists of a jacket and it is a buffer. And strength of for the strength making, so strength members is outer, and there is a coating, and for that, it is a hermetic seal is provided, and inside that, there is a glass fiber inserted. What are the advantages of fiber optic cable? Is first, it is extremely wide bandwidth, the bandwidth available with a single glass fiber is more than 100 gigahertz. With a, such a large bandwidth, it is possible to transmit thousands of video conversations or dozens of video signals over the same fiber simultaneously. And irrespective of whether the information is voice, data or video or a combination of these, it can be transmitted easily over the optical fibers. Whereas only a very less number, 40 to 50 of independent signals alone can be transmitted through metallic cables. The second one is immunity to electrostatic interference as optical fibers are being made of either the glass or plastic external electrical noise and lightning do not affect the energy in optical fiber. The result is noise free transmission however this is not true for metallic cables made of metals as they are good conductors of electricity. The third one is elimination of crosstalk. The fiber system are immune to crosstalk between the cables caused by a magnetic induction. Whereas in metallic cable, crosstalk results from the electromagnetic coupling between two adjacent wires and it is lighter weight and smaller in size. Optical fiber are very small in size. Size reduction make the fiber the ideal transmission medium for ship, aircraft, high rise buildings where the bulky copper cables occupy too much of space. Reduction of size is reduction of weight also. And the next one is lower cost. The material used in the fiber is silica or silicon dioxide which is one of the most abundant material on earth resulting in lower cost. Optical fiber costs are continuing to decline only. And about the security, fiber cable are more secure than metallic cable. Due to its immunity to electromagnetic coupling and radiation, optical fiber can be used in most secure environments. Although it can be intercepted, it is very difficult to do so because at the receiver's user's end, an alarm would be sounded. And about the safety, it is greater safety. In many wired systems, the potential hazard of short circuits requires precautionary designs, whereas the dielectric nature of optical fibers eliminates the spark hazard. And about corrosion, the fiber cables are more resistive to environmental extremes. They operate over large temperature variation than their metallic counterparts and are less affected by corrosive liquids and gases. And it is longer life and easy to maintenance. A longer lifespan of 20 to 30 years is predicted for the fiber optic cable as compared to 12 to 15 years for the conventional cables. And about the fiber optic cable construction, it has 
its outer cable jacket and strengthening of fibers and there is a coating over the cladding and inside the cladding there is a glass fiber. And this construction says design or very many number of design systems is available today. Depending on the configuration, it can may include a core cladding and a protective tube and a polyurethane compound and one or more protective jackets. The fiber cable consists of a core at the center and cladding at the outside. A buffer jacket provides the protection for the fiber from external mechanical influences that could cause a fiber breakage or excessive optical attenuation. And based on the mode of transmission, optical fiber cables are categorized into two types. One is single mode fiber, next one is multi mode fiber. The single mode fiber having only one path for the light to pass and the core diameter is only 7 to 10 micrometer and it has a bandwidth of up to 40 gigahertz. Mostly used in long distances and it is as a low cost circuit used in the TV cables. But about the multi-mode fiber, light takes more than one path to travel. The core diameter is 20 to 100 micrometer and is used for medium distances and it has a high bandwidth. Now we will see what are all the equipments or the apparatus required to do the experiment. Fiber optic transmission module, fiber optic receiver module and at least 20 megahertz dual channel oscilloscope and one signal generator or function generator of 1 megahertz and at least 1 meter fiber cable is required to do the experiment. The theory is a fiber optic link can be used for the transmission of analog as well as the digital signals. Basically, we need we need to have a transmitter module, receiver module and you need a optical fiber. Transmitter module consists of um, a inbuilt function generator, a limiter circuit and compactor circuit and we need a transmission circuit to transfer the optical signal. And in the receiver side, the module consists of a photo director circuit and to amplify the signal we need an easy amplifier circuit in the receiver side. It's a simple block diagram of the experiment is in the TTL board I have a buffer circuit and it is given to the transmitter circuit in the transmitter it may have a emitter, comparator and LED driver circuit will be there and at the receiver side we need to have a photo diode detector and uh, for the receiving side for the detector circuit is given to the analog output signal for the AC amplifier then it is received in the CIO. We will uh, see what is the uh, equipment and how it is used to measure the bandwidth of the signal. We have given, we have given the connection in the board uh, as a, from the function generated to the transmitter module and uh, through the optical fiber disconnected then from the receiver module to the CRO disconnected. The transmitter module consists of a function generator circuit, external analog input. So, the inbuilt, inbuilt analog signal can be taken from the function generator or we can have an external analog signal from the function generator to handle to study the bandwidth. So, we have a limiter circuit for limiting purposes and the output of the limiter is given to the LED driver of the circuit. At last, we have an transmitter module that is uh, for the LED uh, transmitter is there at the output and this is the uh, transmitter module connection step by step connection is shown from, from the function generator the signal external function generator or the internal function generator we can give it to the limiter circuit from the limiter circuit to the LED driver the circuit is connected. Then in the receiver board we have a photo detector receiver is there then we need to amplify the signal and it is given to the analog output. From the analog output we can connect the DSO or CRO. The receiver module from the photo detector it is given to the amplifier then it is given to the analog output circuit. 
this is an one more uh, kit we have in the lab for doing analog transmission digital transmission and also we can go for bit rate transmission this also a step by step uh, connection is shown from the inbuilt function generator is given to the emitter circuit from the emitter output it has to given to the led circuit that is optical fiber cable has to be connected from the emitter circuit then from its output is given to the comparator circuit then from the comparator output is given to the ac amplifier circuit then from that optical fiber kit through the optical fiber the signal will be transmitted right this is the complete uh, kit connection from this the output is given to the dso we will see how to do it in the demo session the procedure is so simple that we have discussed simply giving from the function generator to the emitter circuit from the emitter circuit to the comparator circuit and from the comparator circuit to the transmission module and we can get the output from the optical fiber cable at the receiver side from the photo detector we can receive the signal then we can amplify the signal and we can view it in the CRO and this is what the thing we have to record. So, what is the thing we have to record as a tabulation is to calculate the bandwidth of the optical fiber we need to vary the frequency of the signal then output has to be noted we can calculate what is the gain of the cable that is output divided by input we can calculate that is a voltage gain and in decibels it is 20 logarithm of net value. So, by adjusting from the function generator we can adjust the frequency of the signal from 1 kilohertz 1 volt to up to 150 or 200 kilohertz we can increase the frequency of the signal and every time we can measure what is the output voltage in the DSO or CRO. We can calculate what is the gain of the optical fiber. We know that the bandwidth of the any component we can calculate from the upper cut off frequency and lower cut off frequency. So, bandwidth is upper cut off frequency minus lower cut off frequency that is F2 minus F1. From that we can calculate what is the bandwidth. To calculate what is F1 and F2 we need to go for 3 dB reduction in the output that is we have to see what is the cut off frequency from the topmost of the curve take 3 dB less or 0.707 we can reduce from the top and we can say what is the F1 and F2 in the graph and we can measure what is the bandwidth of the signal. For the given optical fiber it is almost 135 to 140 kilohertz is measured as a bandwidth of the optical fiber. This is the study of the analog link. Right? The bandwidth of the analog link is determined from this experiment. Thank you.